Twilight Sparkle curled up on a pile of pillows in front of the fire, sipping her tea and reading a book in her house for the first time. Something about the idea of her house made this day special. Twilight had spent most of her life living in places built for and owned by other ponies. First her parents, then her room in Canterlot Castle, and finally the Ponyville Library. Each of those places had been home, both in the sense that she felt welcome and in the sense that she had ponies there who made her feel loved. But they were never hers. This house was hers. It was not technically a house. When one beautiful pony she had met at her library home had made her feel a deeper kind of love. Her life had progressed easily and steadily over time to the wedding, and finally to the renovated barn she was laying in. It was one of the oldest on Sweet Apple Acres, Applejack told her when they first discussed the idea, built for the first apple harvests once the trees were grown. The sense of history tickled Twilight's imagination, as she knew it did Applejack's. They both knew there was no other choice for them. So just after the late summer wedding, the Apple family rebuilt the exterior. Then Twilight spent the fall organizing work ponies, plumbers, and carpenters to make the interior perfect. Twilight and Applejack stayed at the library while the work was being done, and they'd finally finished decorating and moving in just after the first snowfall of the year. Twilight felt a draft and looked around the large room. Most of the first floor was this front room, filled with bookshelves from floor to the exposed beams of the high ceiling, where Aloysius roosted. They knew keeping it warm would be hard, but agreed it was worth it to make a barn fit for a princess. A certain kind of princess, at least. One who had hundreds of books it would be impossible to do without. But right now, that princess needed it to be just a little bit warmer. The glance around the room revealed that the fire in front of her was getting low and that there was a distinct lack of logs waiting to feed it. Rolling her eyes with a sigh, Twilight rose to her hooves and walked over to the peg where her scarf and saddle hung. Wrapping herself warmly, she stepped into her boots and made her way into the snowy yard. It was early afternoon, and the sun was shining over fields of snow punctured by the dark trunks of leafless apple trees. It made Twilight think of the marble floors of Canterlot Castle, but the sight of her own breath and the blood she could feel gathering in her cheeks reminded her that she wasn't out here to admire the scenery. She flew to the side of the barn where the firewood was neatly stacked or where it should have been neatly stacked. There were big logs there, but the pile that Applejack split for burning was gone. Twilight gave an incredulous snort and stomped her hoof, but there still wasn't any cut wood. Something nagged in her mind, a memory of Spike saying something about needing to get AJ to cut more wood when he brought in an armful before going to play with Apple Bloom. Twilight personally felt that there was a difference between we need more and we have none left. 
But that was beside the point now. Twilight smiled. She was a competent, capable pony, and this was not an insurmountable challenge. Her magic lifted three logs and placed them on their ends. She trotted through the snow to the small lean-to against the back of the house where she found the sharp, heavy axe that Applejack had shown her and carried it back to the woodpile. So far, for the week they'd spent finishing the painting, decorating, and unpacking in their barn, Applejack had taken this as one of her chores, but she'd at least had the foresight to bring Twilight out here and show her how it was done for just this situation. So Twilight stood a ways back from the log, gripping the axe tightly in her magic, and lifted it over the wood. She brought the axe down sharply, and the head buried deep in the log. Huh? The log didn't split, though. Yeah. Twilight let go of the axe, and it remained lodged in the wood at exactly the angle it landed. With a huff, Twilight tugged on it with her magic, only managing to lift the axe and log at the same time. Rolling her eyes, Twilight stomped over to the log, using her magic to steady it, and gripped the handle of the axe in her teeth. She wiggled it, feeling the wind biting her lips and drying her mouth, and finally managed to free the blade, stumbling backwards as it gave way. She did manage to catch the axe in her magic as she fell back into the snow and leased. As she stood up and shook herself off, Twilight was warmer than she had been when she left the house, but it wasn't a good warm. This was a burning warm, especially in her cheeks and hooves, and it was in contrast to her flanks and the tip of her horn, which felt annoyingly frozen. Still, the inside of her house wasn't getting any warmer either, so she repositioned the axe in her magic and brought it down on the log, the log split with a loud crack, and Twilight briefly considered going inside and warming up again, before attempting to cut more. She recognized the impracticality of that right away, and turned to the next log. As if they'd received the message that Twilight Sparkle was not giving up until she had firewood, the next two logs split easily. That would give Twilight enough to last until Applejack came home. Of course, as she gathered up the wood with her magic, she realized it was simply putting the work on Applejack's shoulders. Shoulders that were currently doing even more physical labor, and that wouldn't be home until after dark, when it would be even colder. She sighed and stacked the cut wood neatly, then used her magic to pull out another ten logs. By the third one, the tingling heat in her hooves had turned to numbness at the very tips. By the fifth, the strength she had to push through her magic for each swing was making her horn sore. And by the time the axe fell on the final log, the sweat on her brow was making her bangs stick to her forehead. But she had chopped a reasonable stack of wood, one that would comfortably get them through tomorrow. Twilight smiled at her work, returned the axe to its place, and carried a few of the cut pieces of wood back inside. It was even chillier in the house than when she had left, so the first thing she did was pile the wood by the fireplace. She put two logs on the embers, and a quick, simple spell made a toasty fire. For a few moments, she rested there, enjoying the warmth as it melted the snow off her and dried the sweat from her brow. Then she stood, slowly. She felt a little achy between trundling through the snow and the energy drained by repetitive magic use. She took off her wet, snow-covered winter clothes and floated them to the pegs by the door, and was surprised to hear the door open. She glanced over to see Applejack and Winona in the doorway. Well, hey there, Twa! Applejack said with a smile, stomping the snow off her boots and removing them, along with her scarf. <laughs> some pony's been busy today. Yeah, we just needed some firewood. Twilight said, sitting on her pillows as Winona ran over to her, begging for affection. 
I am beat. She gave Winona a rub on the head, and the happy dog curled up on a rug in front of the fireplace. Applejack trotted over and gave Twilight a nuzzle. It's no wonder you dropped a whole stack out there. You didn't have to do all of that, you know. I would have done it as soon as I got home. Twilight nuzzled back, enjoying Applejack's soft cheek and the smell of snow and sweat. I know, but you worked all day, and I'm happy I did it. Chopping wood makes you happy. <laughs> well, Sugar Cube, you're gonna have a fun winter. Oh, don't let me have all the fun. But I will see if I can find a spell that will do this faster. The fire was quickly warming the room, and between that and having Applejack home, Twilight was already feeling more energetic. She pulled a book from a shelf with her magic as Applejack trotted towards the kitchen. AJ? Yeah, Sugar Cube. You remember the train ride back from Appaloosa? I said how nice it would be to get home and relax, and you laughed at me. You said, when you have your own home, home isn't where you relax. It's where you want to work. Twilight smiled at her room full of books, her fire, and her smiling wife. I get it now. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> How about I make my hard-working girl some supper? That would be amazing. Twilight said, snuggling down in the pillows as AJ headed to the large kitchen at the back of the house. Twilight picked up her book, Useful Household Spells, and started leafing through as she took a sip from her mug of tea. She immediately spit it out. <laughs> Applejack? Something wrong, Twilight? Twilight started laughing and put her face in her hoof. I spent all afternoon cutting wood and now my tea is cold. Chuckling, Applejack shook her head. <laughs> oh, poor Philly. I'll put a kettle on for you. Thank you, AJ. Twilight said with a sweet smile as Applejack disappeared into the kitchen. Returning to her book, Twilight skimmed for a good woodcutting spell, noting spells for repairing burst pipes and warming blankets, and marking the pages for quick reference. She smiled, knowing that life wasn't perfect, but that her life was better than perfect. It was good. Spike returned home just as Applejack was putting dinner on the table. Twilight set down her book and joined them at the cozy little table in the kitchen. Applebloom showed me cool stuff all over the farm. There's this dead tree that hangs out over a dish you can jump on and it bounces. And a hill you can sled down on until the sled hits this bump at the bottom and flies up and then you fall off into the snow. Spike rambled on, his mouth occasionally full as he didn't pause to stuff in some squash steak. So, you spent the whole day trying to get yourself killed? Twilight said, raising an eyebrow and taking some salad. Oh, leave a be, Twy. It's what the kid does around here. Applejack grinned, filling her own plate. I don't even tell Apple Bloom what all I got up to. I ain't giving her those ideas, but I promise these are a darn sight better. Okay, well, just be careful. Twilight said, picking at her salad with her fork. As worried as she was that Spike might get hurt, she was glad to see him this active. She'd always thought he spent too much time inside, around older ponies, but given her own foalhood, she knew she wasn't one to talk. Apple Bloom was only a few months older than he was, so even if their activities weren't exactly Twilight's idea of a good or careful time, they were probably good for a growing dragon. Twilight, I'm always careful. Like tomorrow we're going ice skating with Apple Bloom's friends, and I'm going to wrap a scarf over my mouth so I don't flame through the ice if I sneeze. Twilight's eyes went wide. She had her suspicions that a scarf wasn't going to do much against dragon flame, and visions of Spike or the foals falling through the ice with no pony there to help flashed through her mind. Hey, Spike, I got a better idea. Um, how about you and the girls find us some evergreens for hearthwarming decorations? We all be getting those up. Oh yeah, I can't wait for hearthwarming this year. 
Me neither. It's gonna be so nice to have both of our families here. I can't wait to show Mama Kids the house. Well then, y'all go on and get the place spruced up tomorrow. Well, I had planned that for Friday, but I could bump it up to tomorrow, as long as I get some letters written tomorrow night. Twilight said, mentally rearranging tomorrow's checklist. Then she smiled at Spike. What do you say, number one assistant? Ready to decorate? Spike considered a moment. Can Apple Bloom and her friends help? Twilight paused, then caught Applejack's smirk before just barely rolling her eyes. Sure. I'm sure they'll be a huge help. Great! Count us in! The next morning, Twilight opened her eyes to find the thought of climbing out of bed extremely uninviting. There was a chill in the air that made her muzzle and the tip of her horn numb, something that definitely shouldn't have been happening in her own bedroom. Worse, her warm wife just climbed out of bed anyway, leaving her with nothing to snuggle up against. Mm. Why is it so cold? You get breakfast, I'll get the fire. Twilight thought for a moment, then rolled out of bed, lifting and folding the blanket and wrapping it around her like a cloak, with a triumphant smile. Applejack chuckled and flipped her hat on her head. <laughs> Guess that's why you're the princess. Twilight headed downstairs, Applejack right behind. As soon as she reached the bottom, Twilight saw the reason for the freezing temperature. The front door was wide open. She smiled and used her magic to push it shut. Well, that was an easy fix. Before she went to bed, Twilight had made sure there were enough logs to build a fire this morning. So she levitated them onto the hearth and lit the fire, deciding that it would be nicer if she was prepared for the day and could focus on decorating for the upcoming holiday. Twilight went to put on her saddle and boots to get some wood for the fire. That was when she noticed an important detail missing. Namely, her winter clothes. They weren't hanging on the hook next to AJ's. They weren't on the floor. She glanced around frantically but didn't see them anywhere in the room. Applejack, have you seen my saddle and boots? Nope. You hang them on the hook, right? Yeah, but they aren't... Twilight's eyes fell on the door that had been open. There. No pony would have stolen her clothes, right? That was ridiculous. Ponies in Ponyville just didn't do that sort of thing. If she was in town, she'd think maybe some pony had borrowed them, but no pony would walk all the way out here for that. She slowly walked over to the door and opened it anyway. The air inside was starting to warm up thanks to the fire, but the air outside was just as cold as when she woke up. She looked around the snowy yard. There were tracks in the snow all over it, her own leading to the wood pile, Applejack's leading home from the rest of the farm, and Spike's coming from the direction of the Phillies clubhouse. But about 20 yards away, there was a pile of color in an otherwise undisturbed snowbank. Twilight used her magic to carefully levitate a piece and found it to be her boot, heavy with ice as if some pony had filled it with water before leaving it there. She brought it towards her and just stared at it. The shoe was frozen solid. With a frustrated grunt, she levitated the rest of the pile and brought it inside closing the door behind her. She brought the clothes over to the fireplace and lined her boots up in front of it, hanging her saddle and scarf from the mantle to dry. Why? You find your stuff? Applejack said, sticking her head into the front room. Oh, I found it all right. 
Outside, it's all frozen solid. Outside? Who put all your clothes outside? Applejack raised an eyebrow. I don't know, but that explains why the door was open. Some pony was playing a joke and forgot to close it afterwards. Twilight heard a thump from upstairs, then the sound of baby dragon feet coming down the stairs. Or some dragon. Twilight glared at Spike as he entered the room. He glanced around nervously, and his eye fell on the icy clothes. A smirk formed on his face. Hey, Twilight. Cool clothes. Get it? Cool like... His face fell as Twilight's look made her lack of amusement perfectly clear. Um... Spike, when I came down this morning, the door was open and my winter clothes were outside. Do you know anything about this? Twilight narrowed her eyes. No! No way! I was asleep all night! Spike backed up, his eyes wide. Maybe it was a... ghost? A ghost? Really? Because I kind of think it was a baby dragon playing a practical joke. It wasn't me, honest! Look, there are still three gemstones in the jar in the kitchen. If I got up in the middle of the night, would those be there? Spike pointed towards the kitchen. AJ? Twilight looked to her wife. Still there, Twy. Saw him myself. Hmm. Twilight regarded Spike suspiciously, then rolled her eyes. I guess it must have been Pinky and Rainbow. Spike raised an eyebrow. You really think they got up in the middle of the night and came all the way over here in the snow just to play a joke on you? Then they left the door wide open? Hmm, that does seem like a lot to put into a prank that's not very funny. Besides, if they did think it was funny, they'd be here someplace laughing. So then, how did the clothes get outside? Twilight just looked at the closed door and cocked her head. I told you it was a ghost! Not a ghost, Spike. Twilight shook her head. Ghosts aren't real. Then how do you explain it? I don't know. Maybe the latch is loose and the clothes just blew out. Spike just stared at her, then walked over and picked up a boot. He let it drop with a loud thud. Your boots blew out. It ain't a ghost, Spike. I lived on this farm my whole life, and I can promise it ain't haunted. Besides, no ponies even died on this part of the farm. All the folks who passed spent their last up at the farmhouse. You're sure? One hundred percent. Applejack confirmed with a nod. Applejack would know. Twilight pointed out. Okay. You got my word. There's no ghosts around here. Applejack motioned to the kitchen. Now come on and eat, you two. I got pancakes, and maybe one of them's made with them gemstones you mentioned. Spike's face lit up, thoughts of a ghost forgotten. Will you marry me, AJ? Already taken, partner. Get on in there before it gets cold. <laughs> Applejack chuckled as Spike rushed into the kitchen. Then she turned to Twilight. Sure, you. You okay? Yeah. Just confused. Twilight said, shaking her head as she walked to the kitchen. And frustrated. I mean, what could have happened? I don't rightly know, but I'll ask around and see if any pony knows anything. Applejack said, giving Twilight a nuzzle, and then following her into the kitchen. You just try not to worry today and focus on getting the house set up for hearthswarming. Twilight giggled. <laughs> Maybe the hearthswarming decorations will appease the spirits. Twilight smiled at the voices of the folds, despite the shiver of her spine as she levitated the boxes down the attic stairs behind her, then down the stairs to the main room. Spike and the folds were making decorations to hang around the place, having spent the morning gathering and putting up evergreens. 
A big wreath hung on the front door, another one over the fireplace mantel, and the tops of the bookshelves and ceiling beams were decked with boughs and tied with bright red and gold ribbons. The kids had been a big help, not only gathering the greenery, but running into town for the ribbons and making trips to the woodpile while Twilight's boots dried. But she couldn't just send them away now, so she set them to work on something moderately productive. She wasn't sure she needed that many crayon pictures of candy canes and gem-encrusted holiday cakes, glitter hoofprint wreaths, or pictures of Rainbow Dash battling Wendigos, but she was sure that the kids' parents and siblings would take a few off her hooves. Twilight set down the boxes and opened them. Two of the boxes were hers, and one was from Sweet Apple Acres. Inside the one from the farmhouse were a few of the decorations they'd used since Applejack could remember, which Granny and Mac had happily agreed to pass on. Twilight levitated a set of red and green apple candle holders to one side of the mantel, and pot holders with snowflakes on them she put in the kitchen. Next, she lifted out a very poorly embroidered plaque, showing two lopsided and unevenly placed hearts on either side of the message, A circle of friends will be to the very end. She was about to put it in the upstairs hallway until she noticed foals writing on the back. To Ma, happy hearths warming, love, AJ. With a smile and tears in the corner of her eyes, she gave it a place of honor on the other side of the mantel. In her own box, Twilight pulled out various knickknacks that had been presents from her family and friends. A music box Princess Celestia had given her went on a partially empty bookshelf, and a ceramic snow pony shining armor gave her when she was just a filly went on another. Last year's present from Cadence and Shining Armor took up most of the last box. A beautiful ice cave made of crystal with crystal figures of the frozen founders and ceramic figures of the three casting the spell. It was a work of art and she set it on the center of the mantel where the crystal seemed to glow with the flickering light of the fire. Twilight hasn't even put up our decorations, Apple Bloom said, hurrying to gather up her drawings. I don't know if I have room for all of those. Why don't you girls pick one for us and take the rest of your families? Twilight suggested, walking over to Applejack and giving her a welcoming nuzzle. Uh, I can't, Scootaloo said sadly. Mom says I'm not allowed to put up any more pictures of Rainbow Dash. Twilight caught Applejack's eye, and both did their best to keep from giggling. Why don't you give them to Rainbow Scootaloo? I'm sure she'd love them. Really? Scootaloo asked skeptically. Applejack nodded. <laughs> sure, I can't think of anything Dash would like better for her swarming decorations than pictures of herself. Okay. So, what are you doing home so early? Me and Mac finished up, and Granny wanted to know if we wanted to have supper up at the farmhouse tonight. Applejack nodded to Sweetie and Scootaloo. Y'all too. Mac said he'd take you home after. Cool! That sounds great. Twilight grinned. One of the best things about marrying into the Apple family was the delicious home-cooked food that AJ, Mac, and especially Granny seemed to conjure up every evening. Hey, Spock! You know how to play cards? Apple Bloom grinned. Spike smirked with an eyebrow raised and tried to slick back his non-existent mane. I might know a little bit about it. Apple Bloom bumped him with her flank. We'll see how much you know after supper. Come on, kids. Let's get all cleaned up before we go. Twilight ordered. The foals took paper and art supplies out to Scootaloo's wagon while Spike returned the things they'd borrowed from Twilight to their places. It looks great. Y'all did an amazing job. Applejack said quietly, leaning against Twilight while they supervised. The kids were actually a big help. 
Twilight smiled, unfolding a wing to drape it over Applejack. Applejack smiled. Figure anything about the clothes this morning? Nope. None of the kids know anything. It must be a joke. I'm sure some pony out there thought it would be funny. But I'm not giving them the pleasure of messing up my day. I had a house to decorate. Twilight said, standing a little taller as she looked around the cheerful room. <laughs> That's my Twilight. Driving yourself crazy wasn't on the schedule for the day. Not over some silly prank. Twilight's smile turned sly, and she leaned over and kissed Applejack softly on the lips. Maybe over my beautiful wife. Hmm, I'd like to help you out with that tonight. Applejack said quietly, returning the kiss. I'm penciling that in my schedule. Twilight said as soon as their lips parted. Right after I finish the letters I need to write. You do that. Applejack pulled away and glanced around for the kids. Come on, y'all, let's move out! As they walked back to the house that evening, the moon on the snow gave them a clear view. Except for the shadows cast through the branches of the trees, the path had been broken by A.J., Spike, and the foals coming and going to the farmhouse, so the way was bumpy but clear. Spike rode on Twilight's back, slightly drowsy after a big meal and an evening losing at poker to Apple Bloom who turned out to be quite good at cards. Twilight, A.J., Mac, and Granny had a fun evening of stories and conversation, and now a peace had settled on the three as they made their way home. Twilight thought she was stepping carefully on the uneven snow, but her hoof caught on something hard. Ouch! Pain shot through her leg as she tumbled forward into the snow, dumping Spike off her back. You two okay? Applejack said, rushing to Twilight. Yeah, a lot more awake now. Spike said, shivering. He hurried to Applejack and hopped on her back. Snow baths are not fun. No kidding. Twilight said, flapping herself into the air. And I think I twisted my hoof on a root or something. I'll have to fly the rest of the way. Good idea. I'll take a look when we get inside. We're almost home. Twilight flew next to Applejack and Spike the rest of the way to the house. As they approached, she stopped and hovered for a minute, studying the door. What happened to the wreath? Hmm, huh. I don't know. Maybe it blew off? It blew off? Like Twilight's boots? Look, I don't know how strong you guys think the wind is around here, but I'm pretty sure it's not that strong. Oh, so now you think the ghost took our wreath? Yes! Well, now I reckon ghosts gotta decorate for hearts warming, too. Applejack said, chuckling as she opened the door. They went inside, and Twilight lit the lanterns and fire with her magic. Spike hopped off AJ's back to sit next to the fireplace, grabbing a book off the lower shelves. Twilight landed on a pillow next to him. Let's get a look at that hoof, sugar cube. Applejack trotted over to where Twilight was sitting. Twilight extended her leg. It looks like a sprain. I think it was cold enough out there, so just a bandage should do for now. And I'll put some ice on it later. No problem. I'll be right back. Applejack said, turning and heading to the kitchen. Luckily, I can still write those letters tonight. Twilight levitated a scroll to herself from the desk on the other side of the room. Then her magic reached for a quill and ink pot. It wasn't there. She looked over at the desk and the ink pot was on the wrong side. Applejack! Applejack came back into the room with a bandage in her mouth. Hmm? Did you move my ink pot? Shaking her head, AJ set down the bandage and looked at the desk. No? That's strange. Twilight and Applejack looked at each other. There was no way that either of them would put it in the wrong place. Well, the house was full of foals all day, 
Twilight said, magically lifting the bandage and wrapping it around her ankle. No way! I made sure your desk was set up when we were cleaning up. I know how you are about that, Twilight. Maybe you... didn't notice? Spike shot Twilight a look. I've only been your assistant my whole life. Okay, but it's just an ink pot. It's the ghost! Spike shouted, suddenly under his pillow. There's no ghost, Spike. Come on now, you're way too grown up to be believing something like that. Applejack trotted over and gave him a nuzzle. Then tell me who put Twilight's clothes outside, and who took the wreath, and who moved Twilight's ink pot, AJ? Who moved Twilight's ink pot? Spike yelled into Applejack's befuddled face. I, I don't know, Spike, but it, it ain't that big a problem. It's only on the other side of the desk. Yeah, Spike. Something weird is going on, but it's not like it's hurting any pony. Your ankle! The ghost tripped you! Twilight laughed and shook her head. <laughs> a tree root tripped me. That's not weird. That's just what happens when you don't look where you're going. Well, I'm not sleeping by myself tonight, Spike said, crossing his arms. Twilight glanced at Applejack, who was cringing slightly. She remembered their plans for later, and that a baby dragon in the room was definitely going to put a stop to that tonight. But, Spike, you've got a perfectly good room. Yeah, a room alone. I'm like ghost bait there. Oh, come on now, Spike, you're a big pawn uh, dragon. You know better than all this. Applejack said, wrapping a leg around his shoulder. Yeah, all the more tempting for the ghost to eat me. Spike, ghosts do not eat baby dragons. How would you know? You don't even believe in them. Twilight looked at AJ, who shrugged and nodded in defeat. Twilight sighed. <sighs> okay, Spike. Just for tonight. I'll move your bed in there when we go up. Twilight levitated the incorrectly placed ink pot and quill over as Applejack sat down next to her, leaning against her and carefully avoiding Twilight's bad leg. The press of her wife's body felt safe and warm to Twilight, and she nuzzled AJ for a few moments, leaving the ink and quill hanging there, half forgotten. Applejack gave Twilight a soft kiss and whispered, Maybe you can pencil that in tomorrow night instead? Count on it. Twilight murmured, smiling, as she returned her attention to her correspondence. The next day, Twilight's plans included going into town to see Rarity for lunch and a dress fitting. Her wings allowed her to get to town without a problem from her hoof, and after the fitting, she and Rarity had an enjoyable meal. Twilight took the chance to ask Rarity if anything strange was going on in Ponyville, and Rarity mentioned that some sets of sheet had disappeared from her clothesline this morning, confirming Twilight's suspicions that there must be a strange sort of prankster about. Twilight was surprised that Spike wasn't interested in tagging along, but she figured that hanging out with his own friends must have seemed like a better time. On her return to her house, when she heard the voices coming from inside, it occurred to her that she should have been more suspicious. What to say next, Spike? Uh, it's time to cast the spirits out. Okay, Sweetie Belle. Now, Power Celestia compels you! What is going on in here? Twilight said as she stepped inside. She was greeted by a strange scene of three fillies and a baby dragon wearing purple silk bed sheets as robes, standing in the middle of a chalk circle drawn on the hardwood floor. Are those Rarity's sheets? She said some pony took them off her clothesline. The power Celestia compels you! Sweetie Belle shouted at Twilight, the hood of the robe falling over her eyes. Twilight blinked. Compels me to do what? What are you doing? Spike found this book, so we're getting rid of your ghost for you! 
Scootaloo explained. Jenny Mike will see you in the exercises! All three shouted at once at ear-splitting volume. Twilight's eye twitched. I think that word is... Power Celestia compels you! Sweetie Belle, stop. Twilight said, magically lifting the sheet off Sweetie's face. First, I'm not a ghost. Second, you can't just compel some pony. You have to compel them to do something. And third, there are no ghosts. Then what happened to your rape? And who put your winter clothes outside? Spike told us all about it. So we thought maybe we could get our cutie marks and chase our ghosts away at the same time. I don't need you to chase away any ghosts. I need you guys to get this cleaned up now. The fillies and dragon all blushed and turned to start cleaning up their ritual space. Twilight grabbed Spike's tail with her magic and pulled him over. Not so fast, mister. I need to have a word with you. Spike turned around. Oh, hey, Twilight. Twilight regarded Spike sternly. I've had enough of this. You know ghosts aren't real. But... Spike protested before Twilight cut him off in a much more sympathetic tone. I know you're scared, Spike. I'll tell you what. I'll check this house, top to bottom, and if there's anything weird going on, I'll find out what it is and take care of it. Twilight smiled as some of the worry fell from Spike's face. But if there isn't anything weird going on, you need to sleep in your own room and forget about all of this. Got it? Yeah, okay. Spike nodded. Twilight hugged him. Good. You make sure this place gets cleaned up, and I'll start right now. Twilight flew into the kitchen. She cast a quick magic scan of the area, and the room lit up with colors. Throughout the room wove a delicate line of magenta where she'd used her own magic to carry things. Over by the stove, a shot of bright green revealed that Spike had been roasting his own marshmallows again. And an orange-brown static twinkled everywhere. The remnants of Earth Pony magic spread through the building over the years and reinforced by Applejack daily. After finding everything exactly as she expected, she moved into the front room where the foals had cleaned up quickly and vacated for parts unknown. She cast the spell again, and the room looked much the same. Whizzing lines and bursts of her magic, streaks of dragon fire where Spike had started the fire or sent letters, and the background of orange and brown. There were a few sparks of mint green in here where Sweetie must have tried to use magic to cast out the ghosts. But once again, everything seemed normal. Even over the desk where the ink pot had moved. Twilight considered stopping, but she had told Spike she'd check the whole house, so she flew upstairs to the bedrooms. Casting the spell in the room she shared with Applejack, she was actually surprised. She had expected the Earth Pony magic to be thinner up here, further from the source, and in a newly added part of the building. Instead, it seemed thicker, a fog that made it hard to see even her own magic. Squinting at the room, she theorized that maybe it was because Applejack slept here. That didn't seem likely, but it was the best she could come up with on the spot. She decided to test it by moving to Spike's bedroom. But Spike's room was just the same. The traces of his flame and Twilight's magic were barely visible through the fog of Earth Pony magic. Twilight landed, carefully avoiding her bad hoof, and just stared at the strange magical residue. Why would Earth Pony magic be so strong on the second story of her house? The barn hadn't even had a second story, just a small hayloft that had been unsafe for years. AJ's magic wasn't strong enough to cause this. She'd be surprised if the whole Apple family could cause magic this thick. 
She desperately wanted to pace while she thought about this, but limping wasn't exactly the same as pacing. So she rose into the air and flapped up and down the hallway a few times. On her third pass, she noticed the door to the attic. That was the logical next step. If the magic was getting thicker higher in the house, the attic should be full of magic. If it wasn't, that would narrow her focus to the second floor, and she could start looking there. Twilight grinned, glad that she had something weird will inevitably come up time scheduled for today. She opened the door to the attic and flew up the stairs. As she approached the less insulated top floor, the air was colder, and she felt a shiver up her spine. The room was dimly lit, and the low ceiling gave a claustrophobic feel to the room, even though it ran the length of the house and was more or less empty since they just moved in. There were only a few boxes full of things that didn't really fit anywhere else, which were taking up space in a corner, and Applejack's desk that she didn't really need but didn't want to part with. Twilight eyed the desk wondering if the heirloom was somehow enchanted. She considered what kind of enchantment of earth pony magic some pony might use on a... <gasps> Twilight gasped and jumped at a sound from behind her. She turned, horn glowing, only to see Aloysius land at the top of the stairs. Relaxing, she shook her head with a wry smile. All she had to do was check the room for magic, and probably everything would be easily explained. Twilight looked back to the desk as she cast the spell. She was glad, because as the room filled with a dense fog of earth pony magic, something in her peripheral vision flashed blindingly. Squinting, she carefully looked to see the roof beam glowing orange and brown like a bright magical ember with golden symbols etched into it. Twilight quickly dropped the spell and her eyes went wide. The solid piece of wood returned to its normal color and texture, the dull brown one would expect of a piece of an old barn. The wood was roughly cut, hewn by an axe, but where she had seen the glowing symbols, she found traces of etchings. They were nothing she recognized, whether because of age or because earth pony magic was admittedly a weak point in her studies. Given the massive amount of earth pony magic she seemed to be living under, she was beginning to regret that. She was beginning to regret coming up here, in fact. Something was wrong. She glanced around and everything seemed normal, exactly as it had been when she first came up at least. She bit her lip, unable to think of anything else to do right now but leave. So she did that, gladly. She flew down both sets of stairs to the front room and started gathering books, anything she had that might mention earth pony magic, and a few on farming and architecture as well. Making a pile next to her pillow, she decided she needed something nice, warm tea to go with her reading. Knowing that magic was upstairs and not knowing what it did made the idea of sitting unappealing. Twilight flew into the kitchen, put on a pot of tea, and waited. Whatever that magic was, could it be doing those things? Well, yes, that was powerful magic. It could easily move an ink pot or open a door and toss out a set of boots. The better question was why would it do those things? Did it have a will? Was it set to do something? It seemed more than a little odd that some pony had used some kind of magical ritual to put a pranking spell on the house or on a barn. Besides, Applejack's family had used the barn for years. Sure, by the time she and AJ settled on it for their house, it had fallen into disrepair, but there were no family stories of strange goings-on or curses. And if there was one thing the apples had plenty of, besides fruit, 
It was family stories. Twilight went over what she knew of the history of the place. It was built about 80 years ago for the first regular apple harvest. The site of the first farmhouse built wasn't far from here, a tiny place where Granny Smith had shared a room with several cousins. But that was abandoned and torn down when Granny Smith married and built the new house on top of the hill. The barn was still in use when A.J. and Mac were children, but they stopped using it as it deteriorated. New barns had been built by then, and they had plenty of room for the apples elsewhere, and the warped boards and weather damage were making this place a never-ending battle against small animals trying to get to the crops. Twilight was startled by the whistle of the tea kettle. She took a breath to steady herself and poured herself a mug of tea, then carefully carried it back to the fireplace even landing on the pillows next to her books, ready to tuck in for a study session. Twilight couldn't keep her wings from ruffling and twitching. She opened the books and scanned the tables of contents and indexes, but found it hard to focus on the information she was reading. Delving into any one book seemed impossible, so she flipped from book to book, finding nothing important. Even a section on magical construction spells didn't seem to note anything like the runes she had seen. She was interrupted, or she would have been if she didn't keep interrupting herself, when she heard the front door open. Glancing up quickly, she saw it was only AJ. But Twilight was clearly bothered. And even if this wasn't Applejack's fault, it occurred to her that A.J. must know something about this, and she'd never even mention it to her wife. Applejack, why is there a ridiculously magical beam holding up my roof? Uh, I don't know. There is? Applejack stopped just before climbing the stairs. What are you talking about, Sugar Cube? Twilight rose from her pillow and flew over to Applejack, eyes narrowed. I checked the house for magical signatures today to see if I could figure out what's been causing all of the weird stuff that's been going on. When I got to the attic, it nearly blinded me. The roof beam has something carved into it. It's carrying some very strong magic. Applejack, I would like an explanation. Applejack stared in confusion. I really don't know. My, my, my family built this place, fixed it up ourselves. We didn't have no unicorns helping or nothing. It's earth pony magic. Could it be left over from the family? I really don't know, Twilight. We didn't do nothing magic to the barn. You got my word. Applejack said, looking Twilight right in the eye and raising a hoof to brush her scowling cheek. Twilight's anger melted. I know. I'm, I'm sorry, AJ. I just... I was surprised. And I can't find anything about what it is or what the symbols carved on it mean. I know you would have told me if it was something you did. I shouldn't have snapped at you. She hugged Applejack tight. I love you. I love you too. Applejack said, hugging back. It's okay, no harm done. You're just awful edgy. Whatever that is up there, I don't like it. I don't know what it is. Maybe when I find out, it'll be okay. Twilight smiled nervously. I'm going to Canterlot this weekend. Maybe I can find out something in the library there. Applejack held Twilight and thought for a moment. Twilight Sugar, you said there's some carvings on it? Twilight nodded. So how about if we ask Granny Smith? Twilight gasped. <gasps> You're a genius, AJ! <laughs> I knew you kept me around for something. Is she awake? Let's go right now! Twilight started to fly to the door without a second thought. I reckon she won't mind waking up to tell us a bit of history. Applejack grinned right behind her. A 
little while later, they were up at Sweet Apple Echo's farmhouse. They had woken Granny Smith, helped her find her teeth, and brought her some tea. And soon Applejack and Twilight was settled in on the couch as Granny sat smiling in her rocking chair. Y'all needed to know something about the history of the place, Sam. Eh? Granny said, raising her eyebrows. Bad time, too. Plenty ought to know her history. I've already know she's gotten married with all them funny sound words, rather than a perfect wedding. Twilight and Applejack exchanged subtle smirks. Neither had won the bit they had riding on when Granny would let them forget that they'd had a unicorn wedding ceremony. But despite that bump and a few small misunderstandings, Granny had accepted Twilight into the family with open forelegs. Well, now that's what Princess Celestia was used to. <laughs> I reckon that however Princess Celestia says we're married, it ought to work just as well. I suppose so. Now, what do you youngins need to know again? We were wondering if you knew something about some carvings on the roof beam of the old barn. They seem to date to when it was built. The old barn, you say? Granny asked, leaning back in her chair. Yes, Granny. Yeah, we built it ourselves, with our own hooves. Yep, right after the first real apple harvest. That was a bumper crop. You know, even after the zap apples, we had some naysayers who didn't think this was a land for apples. That crop, let me tell you, gals. After that, they cleaned up faster than a politician who got caught. <laughs> yes, that was a fine crop of apples we had that year. And every year since. Well, I remember. The, uh, carvings, Granny? Twilight asked, still smiling sweetly. That's what I'm telling you about, girly. Now, where was I? That first year we had a good crop. Applejack reminded her. <laughs> right! We had a fine crop that year, so we decided we'd be staying. We knew the land was going to take care of us. We surely planned to take care of the land. And so we built the old barn. As we had so many apples, you see, and we needed a fine place to put them. And that barn was a good, strong one. Built the last it was. Why, when Applejack told me y'all were going to turn it into a house, I knew that was a right good idea, cause that's a sturdy barn, and I told her so, didn't I, Applejack? <laughs> you sure did, Granny. <laughs> yes, it's a very strong building, but what about the carvings? Twilight was leaning forward, hanging on to every word, in case it contained the sought-after information, but there were a lot of words. I'm a getting there. You city ponies always try to rush a story. This here's a learning experience, child. Well, in my day, if an old pony was telling a story, every pony gathered around to listen. Of course, there were no books around, so that was the only way to find out anything. And sometimes, it just made stuff up. Like, I remember a time my Auntie Seedlin told us that Princess Celestia gave us this land, because she thought my pappy was so handsome. Not that my pappy weren't handsome. He was a fine looking stallion, but it was a bit on the gangly side. Not like my husband, that there was a stallion built like a barn. He'd barely fit in the old farmhouse, which was where we were living during the first harvest. Grant. Twilight started, but Applejack's hoof clamped over her mouth. She shot a look at Applejack, who just motioned to Granny. Granny was lost at some point in history and didn't notice the exchange, continuing her winding tale. Of course, since we was living there during our first harvest, we couldn't homestead the house properly. The land was ours free and clear. So of course we were going to homestead when we knew we were staying. It ain't right to homestead a place you ain't going to stay. It's a promise to the land, and if you up and leave, that's breaking a promise. Nah, the apples didn't homestead this place till we knew it was where we were staying. Luckily, we needed that barn, so we did the homestead on that. Got the roof beam with the old promises and built that barn upright. It's a strong barn, you know. 
Uh, when Applejack told me. So the carvings are from some kind of ritual. Twilight asked, unable to help herself. Homesteading? That's what I just said, child. Granny nodded. Twilight smiled, feeling like she was finally getting somewhere. What is homesteading for? You said it was a promise to the land. Well, it's for luck. You make a promise to care for the land, and the land will care for you. Granny said plainly. It seems to be a very strong magic, you know. It's still there and really powerful. Granny chuckled. <laughs> Gosh, it's powerful. What good is luck that don't hang around? How did you know about homestead, Granny? I, I mean, how did ponies know how to do it? Oh, it's just passed down. She waved a hoof. When a pony sits up for new parts, another pony will tell him how to do it. We've all been sailed here for so long, there's been no need. But I have mean to tell Apple Bloom one of these days, when she figures out what she's for. It's a good thing for a pony who builds to know about. Can you tell me? Twilight bit her lip. This information might be just what she needed. Granny raised an eyebrow and looked Twilight up and down, then smiled. Well now, sure I could. This here's her pony magic, but I reckon a princess ought to know as much about that as anything else. Especially since she's part of an earth pony family. You take a good strong board and you carve it with these symbols. Granny took the pencil in her mouth and paused a moment, thinking. She drew the symbols Twilight had seen glowing in the attic before spitting out the pencil and going on. And you lay the board on the ground overnight, and every pony stands watch around it. That's to keep the other ponies away. Only your ponies can touch it once it's been carved. After that, you use it in a good, strong building, one that's made with care. Then the earth magic will keep the whole claim strong. Long after the ponies at home said it are passed on. Twilight nodded and stared at the symbols. Despite seeing them more clearly, they were still unfamiliar. She ran over the facts and found herself muttering under her breath. So, it absorbs magic from the earth and magic from the ponies guarding it, and the symbols must both anchor and magnify. And then the magic is released for... Luck? That's not a quantifiable magical effect. What entire nation is she talking about? Applejack chuckled. <laughs> Can't rightly say, Granny. But any second now, she's gonna look up and say something smart. Or, she's gonna say... I need to do more research. Yeah, that. <laughs> Applejack smirked. Well, now she's talking about reading more books. So thanks for your help, Granny. Yes, thank you so much, Granny Smith. You've given me a lot to think about. Twilight rose into the air and flew over, giving her grandmother-in-law a kiss on her wrinkled cheek. Applejack rose and did the same. Anytime, you gals. Granny said happily as both girls wrapped up for their walk back home. The sun was still in the sky as Twilight and Applejack made their way back to their house, so they had a clear view of the farm as they walked. In the distance, Spike and Apple Bloom were sledding on what looked to Twilight like a terrifyingly steep hill, with Winona chasing after them. Not much further, after cresting another small hill, their home came into view. The yard looked peaceful but the door to the house stood ajar. They both stopped and exchanged worried glances. The wind? Applejack suggested unconvincingly. Well, at least I'm wearing my boots now, so I know I won't have to thaw them out. Twilight said with a sigh. For magic that's supposed to be lucky, this is awful annoying if that's what's behind all this. Applejack pointed out as the two started down the hill. Twilight nodded. Well, to be honest, I still have no idea what this magic actually does. Luck isn't really an effect magic can have. It could make the land more fertile, or attract money, or make ponies more healthy. Basically something specific. 
So whatever that spell does, it's not exactly luck. Twilight paused and added, "And I don't even know if our strange happenings have been because of this magic. But if they aren't, then there's a perfectly mundane explanation. There were no other magical effects in the house." Well, I'm sure you'll be able to figure it all out just as soon as you get some time to your books. As they neared the front door, Twilight got the same uneasy feeling she'd had in the attic. She wanted to hold back behind AJ. She had no idea what they might find inside or who might be there, but this feeling made her want to hide from it. But she knew that was silly. This was her house. And whatever was inside, it was as much her job to find out as it was Applejack's. With a flap of her wings, she entered the house first. <gasps> she froze and felt her heart stop as she took in the utter destruction of the beautiful room. The front room had been torn apart. Books littered the floor, carelessly tossed from the shelves. Hearth warming decorations had been torn down and scattered around the room. Her desk had been swept clear, and she could see spilled ink pots laying among the books. The mantel was also empty, and on the floor in front of the fireplace, shards of crystal and ceramic were all that remained of her hearth warming cave. Twilight tried to speak. But all that came out was a strangled, pathetic cry. She felt a foreleg softly and gently wrap around her from behind. Applejack turned her around and pulled her close. Twala, it, it's gonna be okay. It's, it's gonna be okay, Sugar Cube. It's a, pr it's probably not as bad as it looks. Applejack managed to say, clearly just as shaken. Twilight swallowed. Fighting back tears as she buried her face in Applejack's shoulder. I, I know, it's just messy, and some things are broken. We're okay, and where's Spike? He's fine. We passed him sledding with Apple Bloom. I think it's best he stays up at the farmhouse tonight. Maybe we ought to too. No, no, I have to get this cleaned up. She turned back to the room, not even sure where to start. Okay, well, let me check the rest of the house first, then I'll come help. Twilight nodded and considered asking if she could go with Applejack. This room was full of the same feeling as the attic. It was the feeling that she shouldn't be here. She wasn't welcome in her own house. You gonna be okay for a few minutes? Applejack looked her in the eye, clearly as unsure about leaving her as Twilight was of being alone. Twilight took a deep breath. I'll be fine. It's only things, and like you said, I'm sure it's not that bad. This feeling was just nerves and disappointment, and the sooner she got this cleaned up, the sooner she'd feel normal again. Applejack nodded and carefully stepped through the wreckage. As she went into the kitchen, Twilight took a few shaky breaths and looked around. She lifted a book with her magic and brought it to her. The spine was cracked, but Twilight just bit her lip. If a few battered books and a broken ornament were the worst of this, she could handle it. She carefully placed the book on a shelf and lifted another. This time, removing the book revealed the broken remains of a glass snow pony Shining Armor had given her when she was just a foal. Tears came back to her eyes, and while she couldn't fight them back this time, she quickly sniffed and wiped them away with her hoof. Setting the book aside, she carefully gathered the pieces of the snow pony and set them on her desk. Maybe it could be repaired when things were safe. Her face scrunched up, fighting something other than tears this time. When things were safe, things were supposed to be safe. This was her own home. This was where she was supposed to be safe. Things like this didn't happen to ponies' homes. What kind of magic was this? It had to be magic. 
No pony in Ponyville would do something like this. She couldn't even think that less friendly ponies she'd met around Equestria would do something like this. But why would magic that was supposed to be lucky destroy her home? She sighed and calmed herself. She would find out, and she would fix it. She was a princess, after all, and one of the brightest magical minds in Equestria. This was magic, and she could find the answers. Picking up a shelf's worth of books in her magic, she glanced at them all. Two or three had pages ripped or covers falling off. She set those aside on one shelf to go through later, and returned the whole books to their shelves. Over and over, she repeated the process. At some point, Applejack returned and started cleaning up the ink pots and gathering the evergreen boughs into a pile. They didn't talk. Twilight didn't know what to say, without screaming or crying. Twilight didn't know how long it was before she heard Applejack give something that sounded like a cough. She looked up and saw AJ by the fireplace, holding something and staring at it. Applejack made the same strange noise again, and Twilight saw her bite her lip hard. Applejack was trying not to cry. Twilight flew over and saw what she was holding, a frame of shattered glass, the plaque she made for her mother. Twilight landed and silently wrapped her wings around her wife. It's just okay. It's just the frame. The sewing's probably fine. Or, well, couldn't, couldn't get no worse than when I made it. <laughs> this isn't fair. I, I know it ain't. I'm sorry, just, just don't leave me, Twilight. The words hit Twilight like a buck to the chest. Leave you? Why would I leave you? Applejack said, burying her face in Twilight's mane. I wanted to make you so happy, Twilight. I, I, I love this farm, I, and I thought you could love it. And I know a farm's no place for a princess, but I figured we could make it a place for you. I, I didn't know. I still don't know what this is or how to protect you. And I know you're going to think it's my fault. Maybe it is. I, I don't know, but all I know is I love you, and if you want to go someplace else, even someplace far away, I want to go too. Applejack, the thought didn't even cross my mind. This is not your fault, and it's not going to chase me away. I do love Sweet Apple Acres, and I love you, and <laughs> this is my home. No magic's going to keep me from it, I promise. I'm going to fight this with all the magic I have. Twilight rested the tip of her horn on Applejack's forehead and smiled. And that's a lot of magic. The two fell into a long, deep kiss. As they held each other, Twilight felt any uncertainty she might have had slip away. She relaxed against Applejack and felt Applejack relaxing in turn. Twilight knew that things would be okay. She would find a way to make them okay. The following weekend was Twilight's trip to Canterlot. She knew her schedule would be tight. She had ambassadors to meet, the Canterlot Hearth's warming ball to attend, and a lecture on advanced emotional magic to give at the school with a reception after. She and Applejack agreed that it would be worth it for her to extend the visit by a day to take a look at the Canterlot Library for information, and to try to get some time to talk to Princess Celestia. The former was easy enough. The entire library was at her disposal any time she needed it. The latter took some pleading notes, hoof-twisting, and one hay of a guilt trip, just for a short tea with the busy solar princess. 
Celestia's sitting room was a tower with windows on all sides and an unrivaled view of Canterlot and the surrounding countryside. The edges of the room were lined with low couches, and perched on one sat Twilight and Spike, while across the room Princess Celestia rested on another. Celestia sipped her tea, but Twilight's cup hovered nearly forgotten as she explained the events of the past week. So, to summarize, something is going on in my house that ranges from annoying to awful, and I believe it's connected to this homesteading ritual the apples did on our roof beam 80 years ago. What should I do? That does sound terrible. I'm so sorry, Twilight. Celestia said with genuine concern in her eyes. As she considered the question, she cocked her head to the side. I thought that homesteading was simply for luck. That's what Granny Smith said. But the magic was very real, and it must be directed at something. Twilight explained, then her eyes went wide. You mean you don't know what it is either? Celestia shook her head. Don't look so surprised. I may be long-lived and well-read, but there's only so much one pony can be expected to keep track of. I don't recall hearing of anything like what you're talking about. What's more, I personally checked Sweet Apple Acres for harmful magic before you moved there, and I found none. You... did? Twilight blinked. And you didn't find anything? Celestia smiled at Twilight. You had enough to worry about, preparing for the wedding, and I thought you might assume the place to be safe. But I didn't think there was any harm in looking, and when I found nothing out of the ordinary, I never mentioned it. They do have quite an infestation of fruit bats, though. Twilight sighed. Ugh, oh, great. This is just getting more confusing. Or... It's becoming more clear. Celestia said, taking a sip of her tea. Then she smirked at the look of resigned irritation on Twilight's face. Oh, Twilight, this isn't some philosophical tangent. You are looking for an answer, the solution to a puzzle. I don't have that to offer you, but I could give you more pieces. Whatever this magic is, it's not dark magic, unless it's something that's been cast since the wedding. And if it is related to homesteading... It's an anomaly. It is not something I come across in memory. I know that those aren't answers, but I hope that they can help you in your search. Twilight relaxed and nodded. I understand. Thank you, Princess. You're quite welcome. Other than this issue, are you enjoying life on Sweet Apple Acres? Oh, yes! My house is beautiful, when it's not ruining my life. And the apples are the most welcoming ponies I know. And Spike is having a great time. She smiled at her assistant. Sweet Apple Acres is cool. Spike agreed. AJ makes the best food, and Apple Bloom is awesome. And having a room of my own isn't bad either. You know, when we're not being haunted or cursed or whatever. Celestia smiled at both of them. Then it sounds like it will be worth it to get this problem solved once and for all. Her smile turned sad as she rose to her hooves. I'm afraid I have to get to my next appointment now. But I do wish you the best of luck, Twilight. Thank you, Princess. And thank you for talking to me. Twilight flew over and offered her mentor a nuzzle. Any time, Twilight. Though, more notice would be helpful. I would have loved a longer visit. Celestia nuzzled back. I'll remember that. Twilight said, following Celestia out of the room, with Spike right behind. Twilight and Spike parted from Celestia and left the castle, headed for the Canterlot Library. Twilight knew the way by heart, though flying there didn't allow for the same jolt of memories that walking the familiar path would have. But she couldn't help but notice where old hearths warming decorations had been replaced by new, and where shops had closed and different stores took their places. Canterlot would always be special to her, but it just wasn't home anymore. Besides, once they were near the library, her path led down a less well-traveled hallway that had never been a regular part of her walks, past a large portrait of a smiling zebra mare, and through an unassuming door. Twilight had never spent much time in the Zelina, the trusted wing of non-unicorn magic, 
so it took her a little longer than usual to orient herself. While much of the space in the wing was taken up by Zebra and Pegasus magic, three bookcases towards the back contained the extent of Equestria's knowledge of earth pony magic. Twilight raised an eyebrow at the meager offerings. Roughly a third of the population of the country got three bookcases, but she had to admit that in all her studies, despite being a princess and having an earth pony for a wife, she'd never gone looking for these shelves before. What books were there seemed to focus on a small range of subjects. Twilight skipped over the books on general metaphysics and the evolution of magic. The effect in her house couldn't have been more than 80 years old, and she'd learned enough about the structure of the magic in her general studies. She was also able to rule out books on nutritional magic and on the effects of magical ability on earth pony social structure, though those sounded fascinating, and she had Spike note a few titles for her to look at later. A shelf of books on the subject of earth ponies who displayed unusual amounts of magic yielded more results. She selected a few of the titles and sent them to her table, planning to compare the ways a talent like that might be revealed. The largest part of the section was on farming magic. Here, Twilight dug in, scanning indexes and sending a whole stack of books to her workspace. There were several books that mentioned homesteading, though none of them had more than a few listings in the index. Once she was sure she'd pulled every book that seemed likely to help, she returned to the table where Spike was already scanning her selections. These two just tells us what we already know. Homesteading is a good luck ritual done by many earth ponies when they settle an unoccupied piece of land. Then they give you the same instructions Granny gave you. Twilight nodded. Just set those aside and keep looking. But book after book gave them the same answers. It soon became clear that no pony knew what homesteading actually did, though the earth ponies clearly took it seriously as a superstition. The same instructions Granny Smith had shown her were written out several times, and the symbols matched the ones Granny had drawn. The books on magically talented earth ponies were also disappointing. There was no mention of homesteading in them at all, nor any indication that even the most powerful earth ponies were capable of effects like the ones that had been happening at the farm. Twilight stared at the homesteading symbols in one of the books on farming magic. She'd spent hours looking at them since Granny Smith drew them for her. Twilight knew hundreds of magical symbols, some of them so outdated that they were more curiosities than tools. She knew the theory behind them, different ways the glyphs captured and channeled magic, from the simplest method using written language to complex signs that were most reliably reproduced by magic, lest you end up with a smudge that would be difficult to explain to ponies, cleaning up the wreckage. One thing was certain, the homesteading symbols didn't seem to fit any parameters she'd ever learned. Without looking up, Twilight said softly, These just can't channel magic. They look like a pony wrote down what they thought some magical symbols would look like, exactly as if homesteading was a good luck charm with no real magic behind it. Okay, Spike, what, what does this tell me? That... Uh, Apple Bloom and her friends could make really good earth pony curses? No. They are channeling magic in my house. So, where did earth ponies get assembled that would contain and amplify such strong magic, but doesn't fit a single magical theory? It sure wasn't borrowed from unicorns. Spike closed his book. He knew this game. They made it up? That would have been nearly impossible. Even if these didn't violate Hornquill's second law of magical containment, it would have taken trial and error over thousands of years. And besides, writing would have worked just as well. Twilight's face shifted from frustration to curiosity. 
Wait a minute. What if this was writing? What would it say? I have no idea. I don't think any pony does. But what if it started out as writing? Maybe even in a different language? But it wasn't really written. It was passed down through carvings or drawings like Granny did. It means something, so it has power. But the letters aren't even letters anymore. They're just marks. And that means we still don't know what it means. Spike announced happily. Then he paused. Uh, how does this help? Twilight looked up and smiled at Spike. The same way Princess Celestia helped. The more information we have, the more we narrow down what we're looking for. For the true meaning of a word to totally fall out of memory and become nothing but some drawings would take a long time. And during that time, the actual meaning of a spell could be easily lost as well. Okay. But why would ponies keep using it if they didn't know what it did? Well, they think it's lucky. It must do something that's good for ponies. That would make sense, since Princess Celestia said it wasn't harmful, and there haven't been other problems like this that we know of. How is breaking your stuff good? I don't know, Spike. Twilight sighed, her face falling again. Uh, I feel like... like I have all the pieces of a puzzle... Except for one. I just need to figure out what effect the spell could have that would make sense. Spike raised an eyebrow. So, you're just looking for something a spell can do that's good for Earth ponies, but bad for us, and that no pony remembers, but Earth ponies use all the time. Yeah. Twilight shook her head clear and stood up. Come on, Spike. Let's take a quick look in the languages section. Okay, lunch sounds... Wait, more research? We do have to eat sometime, Twilight. We'll eat later. Twilight stood up and headed to the door. If this is a language, maybe we can find something similar in one of the ancient texts. We'll check them all. Spike hurried to catch up. Um, do you know how many ancient texts this library has? It's a lot. Twilight and Spike slept most of the train ride home the next morning, exhausted from a full night of poring over ancient languages. While Twilight hadn't found anything resembling the carvings, a quick detour to cryptography convinced her that it was a language at some point. But she could easily see how a word passed down through rough carvings and shaky old ponies who had no idea what it meant would lose its resemblance to anything in a book. She knew she'd probably looked right at the word, the translation written neatly next to it, and been unable to recognize it in the symbols. Despite the drowsiness that came from replacing a good night's sleep with a nap, Twilight's eyes lit up when she saw Applejack among their friends as soon as she stepped off the train in Ponyville. She flew over to her and greeted her with a deep kiss while the rest of their friends gathered around in a hug. How was Cantalot, darling? Rarity asked before they even broke the hug. Did you have a good time at the ball? It was boring. Twilight said, giving AJ another squeeze before letting go. Everything in Canterlot was boring without you girls there. Did you get any studying done? Applejack hinted. Yeah, did you find anything about your cursed house? Rainbow Dash added, earning a glare from Applejack. A few things, but no real answers. Twilight explained starting to fly slowly in the direction of Sweet Apple Acres with her friends by her side. It's not a curse for one thing. It's not dark magic at all. Whatever it is there is something that's probably helpful, just not to us. Fluttershy gave Twilight a look of pure concern. But 
the way Applejack described it, it sounded, well, dangerous. It hasn't hurt no pony yet. Applejack pointed out. Not physically. Rainbow Dash glanced suspiciously at Twilight. What about Twilight Tough? I just tripped. I think. Pinky's eyes went wide. What if you didn't? What if it's trying to hurt you? Fears pressed into Twilight's mind, but she pushed them back with a shake of her head. Pinky, that spell destroyed our house. If it wanted to hurt me, I think it could have done more than impersonate a tree root. Twilight, what if she's right? I mean, it started out with stuff like moving ink pots and tossing your clothes in the snow. I hope it knows those were hoof-stitched. Rarity pouted. I'm not sure this spell cares, Rarity. Twilight's ears drooped. It didn't care much about our family's hearthwarming decorations. Oh! Rarity gasped. I'm so sorry. How very insensitive of me. That's just what I'm saying, Twilight. It's been getting worse. It's been quiet a few days, but you think it might do something dangerous? Applejack gave Twilight a worried glance. I don't know, AJ. I really don't. But we'll have to be careful. Twilight smiled, hoping the wavering in it didn't show. We faced a lot worse than a cranky house. Rainbow raised a skeptical eyebrow. Twilight bit her lip, then set her shoulders and smiled. We are not letting this chase us out. Right, Applejack? If you're staying there, I'm staying there. Applejack said with a nod. Spike? Spike considered the question. My bed stays in your room. Yeah, I guess that will be best for now. Twilight looked wistfully at her wife and added quietly. We'll just have to get this figured out fast. You know... I'm sure my sister asked about a sleepover tonight. Perhaps Spike would like to come. Rarity asked with a wink to Twilight. A sleepover? At your place? Spike said, his voice dreamy and far away. In Sweetie Belle's room. Rarity said sternly, but Spike didn't seem to notice. Applejack and Twilight both silently signaled their thanks to Rarity, who nodded graciously. As the group of ponies approached her house, Twilight noticed Big Macintosh standing by the door. Twilight's face fell, and her heart beat faster, but she felt a nuzzle from AJ, and when she glanced over, Applejack was grinning. All clear, Mac? Applejack called. Max smiled and nodded, and started to trot back to the farmhouse. We have a surprise for you, but it's supposed to be a happy surprise, not a yucky surprise like you had before. A surprise? Twilight asked as they approached the door. Rainbow Dash flew ahead and opened it. Twilight stepped inside to find the front room decked from ceiling to floor. Some pony had gotten new garlands, this time wrapped with ribbons and beads, and hung them from the tops of the bookcases. Sitting on the bookcases, beside the books, were boxes wrapped in bright shiny paper, and on the mantel set a hearth-swarming cave made of gingerbread, with white frosting for snow, and little candy founders inside. Her face lit up. This was her home again maybe even more wonderful than before, because she knew the love her friends must have put into this. Surprise! Pinky shouted. Rainbow grinned at her. Doesn't it look awesome? It's... it's beautiful, you guys. Twilight stammered, unable to take her eyes off the decorations. It was Applejack's idea. Fluttershy smiled. Nothing is irreplaceable. You can enjoy it and you don't have to worry. Some meaning spell is no reason you shouldn't have a good heart warming. Twilight just grinned. Oh, and darling, I have one more thing for you. Rarity's magic floated out a box and lifted the top off. Nestled deep in tissue paper sat Twilight's snow pony, carefully pieced back together. I fixed Applejack's embroidery as well. It's as special as new. Twilight's mouth fell open. 
She looked at her friends, eyes wide with wonder. Oh, Rarity! <laughs> All of you! You're the best friends ever! Then her eyes landed on Applejack. And you are the best wife ever! Applejack blushed and pulled at the floor. No, I just wanted to see you happy, Twilight. Even if this don't last, we'll just keep bouncing back, and we'll make it happier every time. Twilight flew over to Applejack and answered her with a deep kiss. When you guys are done eating face, there's food in the kitchen. Rainbow pointed out, flying past them towards the refreshments. The rest of the afternoon was spent eating cake and drinking cocoa, talking about plans for hearths warming, and enjoying the company of friends. That evening, Rarity took Spike and went to find Sweetie Belle and her friends, while the other ponies went to their own homes, leaving Applejack and Twilight to themselves. Twilight couldn't stop smiling, and she sighed with contentment every time she looked around her home. Applejack went to get some wood for the fire, while Twilight made a pot of tea and fixed two mugs. She carried them into the front room and took her place on her favorite pillow. As soon as Applejack had the fire fed, she joined Twilight, wrapping her four legs around her wife. They sat like that for a long time in silence, and Twilight enjoyed the peace and comfort all around her. Applejack eventually broke the silence in a soft voice. So you had a nice trip? Twilight closed her eyes and smiled. It's nicer to be home. But yes, the trip was fine. I was surprised. Princess Celestia didn't know anything about our problem. She said she's never heard of homesteading doing anything like this before. And you're sure it's the homesteading? Applejack's hoof stroked Twilight's wing. It's the only thing that makes sense. There were no magical signatures. Princess Celestia said there's no dark magic on the farm. And even if there were another pony who would do these things, what would be the point? It's not funny, no pony stole anything, and it's not really an attack. If we rule out those things, and considering that we have a very magical spell at work with unknown effects... Twilight felt herself tensing up and focused for a minute on the feeling of a hoof smoothing her feathers as they tried to ruffle. It's the homesteading. So what did you learn? In farm pony words, if you don't mind. AJ said, smiling. You don't want to get out the highfalutin to equestrian dictionary? Twilight giggled. Nothing that complex, actually. Just that I think homesteading is very old and very magical, and that it must help ponies somehow. I am almost certain the symbols came from a word in an ancient language, but they're too garbled to make sense of. And this isn't something that happens a lot. Princess Celestia has never heard of it. The question is, what does the spell do? Well, say we take all this out of the question. What could it have been doing all these years on this farm? Twilight considered the new direction to explore, and her mind leapt into puzzle-solving mode. A lot of things. That level of magic could produce any number of effects. It could keep ponies healthy, attract wealth, Produce good harvests? Well, I can tell you it don't keep ponies healthy, and I ain't exactly rolling in bits. What about harvests? Granny Smith said that first year was a bumper crop, and they did the homestead and after. Trust me, if you got magic that's gonna make a good harvest, you don't use it after the harvest. She looked at the ceiling, deep in thought, though her hoof never stopped stroking twilight. Granny said it's a promise to the land that you'll care for it, and it'll care for you. Taking care of some pony would mean helping them, doing good things for them. Twilight said, nuzzling beneath Applejack's chin. Or keep bad things from happening to him. Applejack gave Twilight a gentle squeeze. Twi, could all this be a warning? Twilight's mouth twisted. I suppose it could. There could be some kind of precognition worked into the spell. But how are the things that happen supposed to warn us? And what are they warning us about? Well, if it's a warning that something bad's gonna happen to us if we stay here. That explained why it started small. 
If we took the hint with the clothes, it wouldn't have wrecked the room here. Twilight processed that. She looked around the room, her room, in her house. She searched for a reason for it to not be true, but finally she just shook her head. No, 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 I'm not leaving. You think that's what it is? It doesn't matter. First of all, I've done this warning from the future thing before, and I'm not going through that again. I like my current haircut very much, thank you. And second, this is my house. I... I... That's just really important to me, AJ. If something bad happens to us, it's going to happen here, in the place I love, with the ponies I love around me. You think that's what it is? Applejack looked at Twilight, eyes full of worry, but her tone was even, as she said. Why, if my family went to the trouble of doing a magic spell to keep us from getting hurt, don't it seem kind of disrespectful to ignore it? Twilight closed her eyes and lay her head on AJ's shoulder. I appreciate the thought. I really do, but... I don't want to leave. Please don't make me... Applejack sighed and squeezed Twilight again. Twilight Sparkle, I ain't making you do anything. But the last time was a pretty strong warning. Even if it weren't for whatever it's warning us about, do we really want to live with the way it's hinting? Well, maybe it'll stop. Twilight said, hopefully. Now that we know there's danger, there's no point in warning us anymore. It's our choice to stay, right? I reckon so. Applejack reluctantly agreed. And we aren't going to worry about the future. Twilight smiled. Future Twilight is pretty smart, and she can handle herself. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Especially when I got right now, Twilight, and we got the place to ourselves. Twilight met Applejack's lips with a kiss, then smiled as they parted. Mm, I think I'll need all of your attention on that. Applejack grinned and gently pressed Twilight back into the pillows. I couldn't think of something else right now if I tried. Winona was barking. Twilight opened her eyes. It was the middle of the night, and Winona had hopped out of bed and was barking at the bedroom door. Applejack's forelegs were still wrapped around Twilight, but Twilight could feel her stirring. As the fog of sleep slipped away, Twilight's heart sped up. Something wasn't right. She needed to leave. There was a feeling in the house, a familiar sense of fear making her breath come heavy and her wings twitch. Twilight took a deep breath trying to calm herself. Maybe there was nothing wrong. Maybe Winona heard a mouse or a timber wolf howling in the distance. Applejack carefully rolled out of bed and trotted over to the dog. What? What is it, girl? Did you hear something? Winona looked from AJ to the door and whimpered. Twilight could sympathize with the little dog right now. AJ, something's wrong. I can feel it somehow. Applejack looked at Twilight, her expression steeled. Okay, me and Winona will go check it out. You just sit tight, Chipper Cube. Twilight knew she should insist on going, but between Applejack's order and her own pounding heart, she couldn't make herself speak up. Her blankets felt safer than out there, and right now, the only thing that was actually wrong, as far as she knew, was that she was terrified. Okay, just be careful. Applejack flipped her hat on her head and gave Twilight a nod. Will do. She opened the door and stepped into the dark hallway, closing it behind her and leaving Twilight alone in the bedroom. Twilight listened to AJ's hoofsteps travel down the hallway, down the stairs, then out of earshot. She immediately started imagining what AJ might find. Another wrecked room? A message scrawled in blood warning them to get out? A portal to Tartarus? Maybe a portal to Tartarus full of blood that all the things in the room had been tossed into. 
Her eye twitched, and Twilight decided it was time to stop imagining what A.J. might find. Probably A.J. would find nothing. This was probably her own imagination, feeding on the weird things that had happened. The fact that there was a magical artifact that was probably trying to get them both to leave the house was absolutely not a cause for concern. Nothing bad would happen to Applejack wandering into a dark, enchanted house by herself, and nothing bad would happen to Twilight huddled alone in a dark room right below powerful magic that wanted her gone. And that shadow moving on the wall was just the branches of an apple tree in the moonlight. And the feeling that she had to leave right now was just... Twilight jumped straight out of bed at the sound of the thump from downstairs. Applejack had been gone long enough. Twilight knew that she really should check on her. Twilight hurried to the door and out into the dark hall. It was darker than the bedroom, where moonlight through the window at least allowed for some contrast between light and shadow. The hall was just darkness, with the only variance being a hint of light coming from the stairway. Applejack? Are you okay? Twilight called, lighting her horn to push back the darkness. No pony answered, and now blackness just seemed to crowd around the edges, in corners and shadows. Twilight moved quickly to the top of the stairs. Looking down, the room was dimly lit, probably no more than one candle. She tried calling again. AJ? Winona! Once again, there was silence. Aloysius? Twilight squeaked as she started down the stairs. Oh, she would have started down the stairs, but instead she felt herself falling straight down. Her wings flew wide on instinct as she screamed, and she caught air just before hitting the ground. Twilight! Applejack yelled from the front door, galloping across the room. She reached Twilight in seconds and stood on her rear legs to pull her still-shocked wife out of the air and into a tight hug. Twilight, are you okay? I, I'm, I'm okay. The, the stairs disappeared. Twilight said as she caught her breath. She was shaking and wasn't sure she could close her wings. Applejack stroked Twilight's back. I kind of gathered that. They just went away? Yes, as soon as I stepped on them. It's a good thing I can fly. And it's a good thing I was going down. If it had been you or Spike, some pony could have been hurt. Twilight's eyes went wide, and she hugged Applejack tighter. If you hadn't flapped them wings fast enough, you could have been hurt. Applejack pointed out, pulling back from Twilight to look her in the eye. Twilight, let's go, please. Something don't want us here, and it's hitting too close to home. Applejack's words made sense. Twilight knew that, and given the uneasy feeling that had only grown stronger combined with shock from the fall, Twilight knew that she had every reason to leave the house, but she had one reason not to. One reason that was more important than anything. This is my home, and yeah, it's hitting me way too close to home. In my home! Twilight looked up where the stairs should have been, towards the attic where she knew magic was radiating to try to chase her away. She narrowed her eyes. It's not allowed to do this! She stepped back from Applejack and turned and shouted up. You hear that, you stupid spell? I am a princess of Equestria. I have magic too. You can't just... just bully me out of my house! Twilight's nostrils were flared, and she was breathing heavily. Her unbrushed mane and the wild look in her eyes made her seem like a pony possessed. Applejack regarded her with wide eyes and said in a gentle voice, Uh, Twilight Sugarcube, calm down, please. How about we go someplace else? No, I've had it. All I want is my house and my wife and my books. I'm not leaving. That stupid beam is leaving! Twilight's horn glowed, and she reached with her magic to the top of the house. Her magic wrapped around the roof beam, but another magic was pushing it away, 
pulsing from within the beam itself. Twilight braced her hooves and pressed into the magic, sweat beating on her forehead. There was a loud groan, like the very frame of the house straining, and the books burst off the shelf closest to her, some of them slamming into one side of her body. But that couldn't budge her. Nothing could budge her right now. The house shuddered as her magic slipped through the magic of the house in spots, giving her a weak grasp on the wood. Twilight, if you pull that... Look out! Twilight heard Applejack shout as the bookcase next to her started to teeter. Twilight struggled to maintain her hold while shifting to the other side of the room. Her magic slipped just a little when the heavy wooden bookcase crashed to the ground, where she'd been seconds before. But with a glare at the ceiling, she forced against the magic with renewed determination. Why we gonna go? Come on! Applejack pleaded from behind her. I'm not leaving! Twilight said through gritted teeth. Her magic tightened around the wood, finally driving through the opposing magic and gripping around the offending beam. The house shook again, but Twilight was not going to be distracted this time as she prepared to rip the beam from the roof. She didn't get a chance before she found herself yanked sharply backwards. Seeing the spot where she had been standing slammed by the bookcase on the other side, her concentration broke as Applejack pulled her by the tail, galloping fast and hard for the front door. Behind them, well-made bookcases heavy with books tumbled to the floor with a series of crashes. AJ kept running out the door and across the yard, finally collapsing in the snow at the tree line. Twilight's tail still clenched firmly in her jaw. Applejack, let me go! I am going to do something about this once and for all! Twilight yelled, still straining towards the house. She felt her tail released, just long enough to crash into the snow with AJ's weight on top of her. Twilight Sparkle, listen to me! Just listen! Applejack shouted at her, fear in her eyes. She panted for a second, then went on in a strong, even voice. That ain't a warning. That house is trying to kill you. It's trying to... to don't go back in there. You can't go back in there, please, Twilight. Please don't. The strength drained from AJ's voice as it turned to pleading, then faded. Seeing Applejack's eyes and feeling the cold snow and earth beneath her, Twilight blinked as the reality of the situation took hold. I... I just... She stammered, unable to explain the fading storm of emotions in words. It's okay, Twilight. It's just a house. There's other houses in Ponyville. We can live there and it'll be okay. I don't care where we live, so as you say... Applejack said softly, shifting from holding her down to wrapping her in a hug. I know. Twilight whimpered, burying her face in Applejack's shoulder and breathing in the familiar comforting scent of her wife. I know. Applejack just held her like she would never let go and said, Just promise me you won't go back in there till we get this worked out. Promise me that. I promise. Twilight nodded. Applejack took a deep, shaky breath and stood up, offering Twilight a hoof to pull her out of the snow. Twilight accepted and shook the snow from her wings. Oh, poor girl, you must be freezing. Applejack helped to brush off the snow. We'll go to the library tonight, okay? We can stay there for a bit. Twilight nodded absently. Okay. Right now, the cold didn't matter to her. Where they were going to stay didn't matter. They were things that she knew logically mattered, but when the emotions from earlier drained, they seemed to leave nothing behind. Good. We'll go stay at the library. Applejack swallowed and took a deep breath as she stepped away. Now stay here. I'm just gonna go... Twilight blinked her tears away as she watched Applejack walk cautiously towards the house. Applejack took another deep breath and called out in an uncertain voice. 
Winona? I are wishes. Come here. For several heart-pounding seconds, Twilight realized that Applejack had been too busy saving her against her will to do anything to help their pets. One emotion returned to her, searing, painful guilt, strong enough to paralyze her. Aloysius flew out of the door and landed on Applejack's hat. Then a bark broke the silence, and Applejack grinned. She called towards the bark. Seconds later, a bowl of fur crashed into Applejack, licking her face. Oh, it's okay, girl. Good girl. You're a good girl, Winona. Applejack turned and walked back towards Twilight, smiling sympathetically. Okay, Sugar Cube. Let's go. Twilight nodded, biting her lip. She found she could move again, but her ears still drooped, and she hung her head. Applejack, I'm sorry," she said as they started down the dark road towards Ponyville. Applejack pressed against her. "It's okay, Twilight. We're all safe, and that's all that matters right now. I mean that." "I know," Twilight said, not sure if she agreed. Over the next few days, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Big Mac went back to the house to pack things up. By the end of the week, the house sat empty. Day-to-day -day items had been moved to the Ponyville Library, where the little family was living, and the larger things and books were safe in a different barn on the farm. Twilight, for her part, mostly sat in the library reading books she'd read before. Something about her glorious failure at the life she'd been working for made stifling conformity to what she'd already had seem like the only option. But even there, she felt like a failure. While it was impossible for Twilight to not keep the shelves in order, and she was careful to clean up after herself. She just couldn't bring herself to do much more for the old oak tree she used to call home. She was still there for Applejack and Spike and for her friends, but it was obvious the cloud of defeat around her was making that less than effective. They tried to snap her out of it. Fluttershy and Pinky decorated the treehouse for hearts warming, and while the third attempt wasn't as impressive as the previous two. It looked cheerful and festive. Rarity took Twilight to the spa, and Rainbow invited her to come flying on days when the Pegasi had scheduled a snow. Twilight did her best to enjoy it all, but a spark seemed to go out of her. The only thing that Twilight did of her own accord, besides reading, was walk to Sweet Apple Acres and stare at her house. She never went near it. She remembered her promise to Applejack and the rest of that night all too well. She just wanted to see it, to think about what life had been like a few short weeks ago, when she was moving in and full of hope and expectations. With fresh snowfalls, the yard looked clean and untouched. The foals had been warned away from the place and wisely decided to listen for now. The house had the look of a hearth-warming car, with snow on the roof, and icicles hanging. All that was missing was a wreath on the door and a cheerful light from inside, inviting ponies to the warmth of a fire. Twilight would have done that. She would have kept the fire burning and opened the doors to friends and family. She couldn't. She just drooped her ears and hung her head, turning away just like she had that night. It was afternoon, so the sun was shining through the clouds as she walked down the road to Ponyville. Applejack joined her on her way back to the library from her work on the farm. How you feeling, Sugar Cube? Applejack asked gently. She knew why Twilight visited the farm, and while she didn't think it was the best idea. She'd agreed that moping in some fresh air was a good change of pace from moping over books every once in a while. 
Okay. The girls are going to be over tonight to hang out. Applejack smiled hopefully. Twilight did her best to return the smile. That'll be nice. Applejack sighed, then bit her lip. Uh, say, did you notice there's a house for sale on the other side of town? It ain't as big as the one here, but next summer we could build onto it. Want to take a look tomorrow? Twilight thought about it. She did know the house. Rarity told her about it, but it was a lot smaller than their house. Her books wouldn't fit in it, and it was even further from AJ's work and family than the library. And it didn't have a fireplace, just a furnace in the basement. And she knew all of these things were excuses, but it didn't change the fact that she didn't want to look. No, I really don't. <clears throat> okay, maybe we'll talk about it after horse warming. Yeah. Twilight said, looking at the snow-covered apple trees as they walked. They were both quiet for a few minutes. Finally, near the edge of town, Applejack sighed again. Twilight, sugar, I'm doing all I can. Just tell me what I can do to make this right. I don't know, A.G. Twilight swallowed. <laughs> I wish I knew. I loved that house. It made me want to take care of it. I could see myself hosting hearthwarming there, or raising foals, or writing books. And now it's all gone. And I don't even know why. It's so frustrating. I know just how you feel. I thought it was perfect, and I'm right disappointed too. Twilight? Yeah? Twilight looked over to AJ. What if we got rid of the spell? Like you wanted to that night, but uh, sometime when we're not quite as wound up. Applejack said, delicately. I thought of that. Twilight glanced back towards the farm. But it's not evil. In fact, it's probably doing something good, like it has been for 80 years on Sweet Apple Acres. What if getting rid of it makes it harder for your family somehow? If I just knew what it did, I could make a decision. But I can't do that not knowing how it will affect some pony. Okay, well, then let's think on it again. We'll figure out what it does. I have been. I need more information, AJ. Twilight shook her head in frustration. Just one little hint. Applejack trotted in front of Twilight, stopping her on the street in front of sofas and quills, and stood facing her. Then we'll find you that hint, Twilight. After Horse Woman, we'll find it if we gotta look in every library in Equestria, or in the world. If any pony ever knew what that spell did, me and you can find it. We gotta be two of the most stubborn ponies who ever lived. So I know we can do this. She smiled. Just don't give up, Sugar Cube. Twilight felt a real, genuine smile force its way onto her face, and a little bit of weight lifted from her shoulders. I won't, AJ. I can't. That's the problem. I don't know how to give up on this. Then remember that I'm right here with you every step. Applejack leaned forward and nuzzled her. That is something I need to remember more often. Twilight nuzzled back. Now, let's go home and see if the girls are there yet. The two walked the last block to the library, pressed together. Twilight felt stronger than she had since the last night at her house. She felt hope, faint and distant, but it was there, and it made all the difference. She draped a wing over her wife and glanced over at her every other step. Opening the door to their temporary home, Twilight saw the rest of her friends and Spike had made themselves comfortable. The ponies and Dragon were sitting around the fire, laughing at something that some pony just said, but they all looked over when they heard the door. Hey guys! Rainbow called out, scooting over to make room in front of the fireplace. There you are, darlings! Rarity smiled. We saved you some cocoa! She said, floating mugs to both Twilight and Applejack as they sat down. 
Thanks. Twilight said, then took a sip of the delicious hot chocolate. Pinky gasped. <gasps> Twilight, you're smiling. You look happy. Twilight blushed, thinking about how she'd been acting, that it was such a surprise for her friends to see her smile. But she knew that they would understand. I am happy. AJ and I are going to work more on this spell after the holidays. We're not giving up on our house, even if it might take us a while to get it fixed. Great! We're going to move back to the farm? Spike asked. Not till it's safe. Applejack said seriously. Then she smiled at Twilight. But we're going to get it there. You know we'll all help. Rainbow offered. It's gonna be a lot of reading, Twilight said with a smirk. Of course, we'll all help you in any way we can. Rarity said, raising an eyebrow towards Rainbow. This is wonderful, Twilight. Fluttershy smiled. Where will we start? Maybe I can spend hearts warming getting caught up. Well, there's not much catching up to do, Twilight said with a shrug. It's a spell called homesteading. And it's a ritual Earth ponies do for luck, but you can't do a spell for luck, and it obviously hasn't been lucky for us. So what it's actually doing must be something else. It's something that has been good for ponies for a long time. So I'd hate to take it away from Sweet Apple Acres without knowing what it is. But if we find out, we can decide what we want to do from there. Homesteading? No wonder. Pinky scrunched her muzzle and stuck out her tongue. When ponies are being not friendly, why ponies want to do something ponies do who aren't friends? No wonder it doesn't sound like Twilight, since she's super friendly. Pinky. Twilight said slowly, setting down her cocoa. Applejack stared at Pinky, confused. Pinky, what did your folks tell you about homesteading? Nothing. Why would they tell me about homesteading? Blah. Pinky made a face, then noticed Twilight's cocoa sitting unattended. She grabbed it and gulped it down. Twilight didn't care. She was focused on the new possibility. She knew better than to get her hopes up that Pinky's random opinions had some basis in fact. But she couldn't help saying carefully, "Okay, Pinky, tell me everything you know about it." Already did, silly. Pinky said with a grin and a shrug. Then what makes you think it's bad? Twilight pressed on the edge of her pillow. It's in the heartwarming story. Duh. Pinky rolled her eyes. Wait, what? Twilight's eyebrows shot up. It can't be. Applejack said. Then she put a hoof to her chin in consideration. Or well, I guess it could be. I mean, I ain't read the thing in a while. Yeah, I mean you see enough plays and you've kind of got the picture. Spike agreed. I read it last year. Twilight insisted, then bit her lip. Or two years ago,、uh, but but one of the books would have mentioned that. Here. Pinky bounced over to a shelf and retrieved an old copy of A Fool's Tale of Hearth's Warming. She flipped it open and offered it to Twilight. Twilight looked down at the page. Just after the founders had moved to what would one day be Equestria, and discovered the other tribes were there as well. Scanning the page, she found the word and read the section around it out loud. There was no peace in the new land. The Pegasi readied their spears. The unicorns cast shields, and the Earth ponies homesteaded the ground, all suspiciously watching their neighbors. But these things did nothing to keep out the howling winds. It was Fluttershy who spoke up first. So homesteading was important when there was no peace, when ponies were angry at each other. No. Twilight shook her head. When they were worried, casting shields and readying spears are defensive. They were all expecting trouble, and the important thing that Earth ponies did was homestead the land. She frowned. But it didn't work against Windigos. They would have known that it wouldn't keep out the cold. None of what the tribes were doing worked against the Windigos. It worked against other ponies. AJ, that's it. Twilight's face lit up. 
Let's say you're an earth pony. Applejack raised an eyebrow. We can say that. I mean an earth pony living before the founding of Equestria. Twilight added, rolling her eyes. You've got a good piece of land, but you're facing unicorns with spells and pegasi who can fly and attack from out of reach. Even if they don't want to farm it, they may have reasons for taking it. But if you've got a spell that makes that land start attacking any pony who doesn't belong there, pegasi and unicorns will know better than to try and claim it for themselves. Applejack nodded, then grinned. Wait a minute! You never looked at no books about warfare, did you? Twilight shook her head. It wasn't really the first thing that sprang to mind when I thought of spells that might be on an 80-year-old barn, so no. Here, check this one! Applejack hopped up and ran across the library. She pulled out a book and tossed it to Twilight, who caught it in her magic. I used to look at it when I was a foal. I had a bunch of stuff on the fence that I skipped. Twilight smirked and raised an eyebrow at Applejack as she opened the book. Applejack chuckled. It was more fun reading about the battles. Ain't my fault that 20 years later it turns out I should have been reading the boring parts too. Rainbow Dash stuck her head over Twilight's shoulder. There's battles in that book? Can I see it? I'm reading it. Twilight said as she scanned the index. Will you be... Oh, here it is. Twilight grinned as she came to homesteading in the index. She quickly turned to the page. In addition to fortifications, earth ponies used a magical practice called homesteading to defend outlying properties such as mills and farms. If another pony tried to claim the land as their own without a proper transference of the rights to the land, the magic in the land itself would defend the rightful claim. After the founding of Equestria, homesteading remained a superstitious ritual in agricultural areas, though few who practice it understand its true value. Twilight gave a snort and muttered, <laughs> Few? That's an understatement. Twilight shook her head clear. This is it, AJ. I've been calling it mine, but the spell doesn't think I own the house. But you're my wife. I mean, this never happened to my ma or grandpa Russet. That smell ought to know that my house is your house. Is it because Twilight is a princess? Spike suggested. I guess it could be. Twilight admitted, frowning. But that doesn't really make sense. The description doesn't say that other ponies can't own the land, just that they need a proper transference of the rights. Shouldn't the wedding be enough for that? What's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. It's right there in the wedding vows. Applejack looked to Twilight. AJ? Twilight blinked, then her eyebrows furrowed. That's not in a unicorn ceremony. Historically, it would have caused all sorts of problems with titles and estates. Rarity arched an eyebrow. Twilight, darling, you are saying that the ceremony you were married with was designed to distinguish that parties don't properly own one another's estates? Well, yes, yes it was. Twilight gave a laugh, which dissolved into full-scale laughter. She wasn't sure she could stop. It was so simple. She'd spent so much time and worried so much, all for the overlooked detail of a few missing words. Applejack started to chuckle as well. <laughs> so Granny Smith is right is what you're telling me. We should have had an earth pony ceremony. She's going to crow like a rooster when she hears this one. Eventually, Twilight managed to calm herself to a grin. I'll be happy to hear it when she comes to our house for hearts warming. Twilight shook her head. Right now, we just have to find some pony to marry us. <laughs> Again. I'll go get the mare. Rainbow Dash offered, flying towards the door. Meet us at the house. Twilight called after her, just before the door closed behind her. Twilight looked to the others and explained. I'll be able to check right away to see if it worked. Is that safe? Fluttershy asked. Twilight trotted to the pegs by the door and put on her scarf. We'll do it in the yard, and I'll be really careful when I check. If there's still magic, I'll leave right away. Applejack joined Twilight, putting on her boots. She nuzzled Twilight and asked. Twilight, you don't mind this, do you? 
You know, I never minded that we had a unicorn ceremony, and I ain't happy this homesteading thing says we ain't as married somehow. Twilight smiled at her wife. AJ, our wedding was beautiful, and I don't think any pony questions that we were married in our hearts, even Granny Smith. But I think what Granny Smith was bothered by is that there's a side of you I didn't give myself to. Your heritage. That would have been fine if we wanted to live in Canterlot. We would have been happily and totally married. But when we built that house, I knew I wanted to be a part of your heritage. I wanted to be a part of your family and your roots. I want my own roots there. I want to take care of my house the way you want to take care of all of Sweet Apple Acres. That's what this ceremony is to me. I promised to love and honor you. And now I get to promise to love and honor the place that's a part of you and make it my home the way that you're my wife. Applejack didn't say a word. She just looked into Twilight's eyes, then kissed her deeply. This is beautiful, Rarity said, sniffling. Her magic floated a handkerchief to her eyes. I adore weddings. Then let's go have one, Pinky shouted. Hopping over to where her scarf was hanging. Come on! The five friends trotted to Sweet Apple Acres, the second trip of the day for Twilight and Applejack. But where Twilight's last trip to the house had been a plodding walk fueled by longing and regret, this one seemed to fly by on the wings of hope. She even took to the air at a few points. Her excitement being too much for even her bouncing jog and the grin on her face to contain. When she came to the house, she was struck once again by the beauty and peace of the scene. But this time it made her smile. If all went well here, if she was right, then by tomorrow she would be adding the touches the scene needed. The light in the windows, the wreath on the door. The curling smoke coming out of the chimney. The house needed those things, and she wanted to offer them with all her heart. They weren't waiting at the house for long when Rainbow Dash came flying up the road, followed by Mayor Mayor. The mayor didn't seem to be particularly happy to be asked to officiate a wedding on a snowy evening with less than a half hour's notice. But Twilight and Applejack were each owed copious amounts of goodwill by the town, which had been enough to pull her from her warm house and hot tea. Every pony present agreed that there was no need for poetry or lengthy speeches, just the traditional parts of the Earth Pony ceremony that the mayor was used to performing for ponies in the traditionally Earth Pony town. The mayor began the ceremony, and Twilight barely listened. The details of the vows weren't important to her. They hadn't been important during the first ceremony. What was important during that first ceremony was that she had found a true partner for her life, a pony she could rely on for anything, whose word was golden, and whose heart went into everything she would do in life, as much as Twilight's did, and she wanted to bind that with a promise of all the same things. Looking into Applejack's eyes as Applejack made the same promise again in different words, Twilight couldn't believe how lucky she was. But what was important during this ceremony was that she had found the place she wanted to be with Applejack. A house that was special enough to deserve her dedication. It was a part of Applejack, a part of her history and life, and Twilight wanted that to be part of both of their lives, and both of their futures. So, as she repeated the promises that Applejack made, her heart begged the homesteading spell to accept them as well. As the ceremony ended, Twilight kissed her wife on cue. She kissed her wife every day. It wasn't magic. That's what was so special about it. Magic and power were things she'd struggled with and conquered since she was a filly. 
Kissing Applejack was the other side of herself. It was like the last check mark on a to-do list on the end of a nice long study session, or the feeling of coming inside after chopping wood. It was the simple pleasure of being a pony in love with a pony who loved her back, and knowing that was real. Maybe other ponies dreamed of being a princess in a castle, but Twilight dreamed of this kiss in front of a fire, inside her warm home, full of books and history, and work, and life. Did it work? Spike asked as soon as Twilight and Applejack parted. Twilight looked over at the house. Her horn lit up as she made a quick scan of magic. I... I think it did. I should check the roof beam. Let's go. Y'all stay here. I don't want no pony getting hurt. Be careful. We don't want you getting hurt. Fluttershy pointed out. We'll be okay. At least we will now that I know better than to go to war against buildings I'm standing in. Applejack chuckled and shook her head, and the two of them headed towards the house, forging a path through the fresh snow. Applejack opened the door and stepped inside first, Twilight right behind her. Twilight smiled as she noticed that she didn't feel the dread she'd felt last time she was here. The place didn't feel like home, not yet, but everything in the room was radiating the potential of a blank slate. The bookshelves had been righted, but sat empty. The stairs seemed to have reappeared, and even as the hoofsteps echoed through the house, Twilight could envision the place coming back to life. It reminded her of her feelings when she first began moving in. Applejack broke Twilight's train of thought as they reached the stairs. Twilight, you know that if this didn't work, I meant what I said before. We'll find something that does together. We can even get rid of this old thing. I'm pretty sure we're safe from being invaded these days. I know. Twilight nodded, thinking about her house as a whole as she carefully climbed the stairs that had disappeared. The spell had changed the way she felt about the building. There was fear, especially here where she nearly fell. But it was more than that. She still loved the house for its place in her life, and in Applejack's life. She appreciated the powerful magic protecting it for its ancient utility, and the direct line it drew to Equestria's past. She respected this house. She bit her lip. We could get rid of it, but I hope we don't have to. I think the spell is interesting. We don't need to keep it, but if we can, I'll be happy. It gives the place character. It tried to kill you, Applejack said dryly. Twilight grinned. It's a conversation piece. Yeah, that's a conversation I want to have with your ma. Applejack rolled her eyes as they made their way down the hall and up to the attic and mimicked. Say, Ma Velvet, did you know my family built this place themselves? And they put a spell on it that tried to shove those bookcases over on Twilight. Yep, those are sure solid oak. Twilight giggled. <laughs> you know my mom. She'll probably be taking notes for her next... Uh... Twilight trailed off. They had reached the top of the attic stairs, and Twilight looked around. The claustrophobic feeling was gone from the room. The ceiling was still low, and the light was still dim, but nothing was pushing her to leave. She gave Applejack a nervous smile and whispered, So far, so good. I'm right here with you, Sugar Cube. Applejack nuzzled her. Twilight nodded and steeled herself. She closed her eyes, half afraid of the blinding light that might come from the beam and what it would mean. But she cast the magic detection spell anyway. The magic flowed through her horn, and there didn't seem to be a bright light behind her eyelids. She opened her eyes again, cautiously. While Earth Pony magic still hung thick in the room, there was no intensely shining magic from the roof beam. The symbols glowed gold on an ordinary wooden beam, 
The spell was still there, but it wasn't active. This is my house, Twilight whispered. She felt Applejack press close to her, but nothing else happened. No shiver of fear, no explosion of magic, just the calm of an empty house, and the warm feeling of her wife next to her. Twilight inched forward and brushed her hoof against the beam. Everything okay, Sugar Cube? Twilight smiled, tracing her hoof over the carvings. I almost want to apologize to it. It was just trying to protect us. I was kind of doing the same thing when I threatened to get rid of it. Well, as long as you and the house are good with each other now, <laughs> I think we're gonna get along just fine. Twilight giggled and nuzzled the roof beam before turning to leave. She stopped when she got to Applejack and kissed her lips. Applejack kissed back eagerly. When they parted, Twilight looked in Applejack's eyes. Thank you. Applejack raised her eyebrows. Um, for what? For sharing your home and your life with me, for promising twice to always stand by me, and for proving that you mean it. Twilight smiled at the blush that grew on AJ's cheeks. A pony's gotta take care of the ones she loves. Applejack said simply. Twilight nodded and grinned as she headed down the attic stairs. I know exactly what you mean. Twilight's house was bright and cheerful that heartwarming day. It took careful planning and tireless effort from both Twilight and Applejack to get moved back in, settled, and prepared to host a festive dinner in one week before the holiday. But it was no surprise to their friends or family that they managed it. But rather than just managing it, Twilight relished it. The combination of the relief of having her home back, the excitement of showing her family everything she loved about it, and the comfort of knowing that she had a beautiful pony by her side who she could count on for every detail of the work, made the bustle and organization a celebration of its own. The best part was that it all paid off. Both of their families were gathered, enjoying the holiday together. Twilight had set up a long table on one side of the front room, and she and Cadence were placing the plates on it, while Granny and AJ worked their magic in the kitchen. Twilight's father was with them in the kitchen, thrilled at the chance to lend a hoof and learn as many secrets as they would offer. It's really wonderful of you to have us all, Twilight. I don't think I've ever enjoyed harp swarming this much. Cadence said, floating the silverware to the table and setting the appropriate magic and non-magic places at each plate. Even if it does seem, I'm going to have to find a royal puppy trainer when we get home. She nodded towards the fireplace, where Shining Armor's magic held a short, knotted rope, which Winona happily fought to take from him. He'd immediately fallen in love with the friendly little dog and spent the whole day playing with her while dropping not-so-subtle hints to Cadence and that a puppy might just show up at the palace one day soon. Twilight's magic carefully placed wine glasses at the places of the adult ponies for the crystal wine Shining Armor and Cadence brought to go with dinner. It's every pony being here that makes it special. This is exactly what I wanted my home to be. Twilight glanced over with a smile as laughter rang out from where Twilight Velvet sat on the floor playing cards with Spike, Apple Bloom, and Big Macintosh. All day, Twilight's mother had been making up amazing stories about herself that were just ridiculous enough to send Apple Bloom into fits of giggles and earn at least a snicker from more grown-up ponies. The door to the kitchen opened and Applejack came out, balancing a large salad bowl on her back, followed by Nightlight, with another two dishes in his magic. We're getting close to done, Sugar Cube, Applejack said, expertly bumping the bowl onto the table. Great! 
The table's almost set. <laughs> I'll take those, Dad. Twilight's magic took the dishes from night lights and placed them on the table in the spot she'd planned. Your paw's right handy in there. Applejack said, walking over to give Twilight a nudge as Twilight adjusted the salad bowl. Cadence giggled. <laughs> I'm sure he's more useful than I'd be. Shining can tell you about his last birthday cake. <laughs> she smiled at Nightlight. At least one of your children had the sense to marry a pony who can cook. Nightlight chuckled. <laughs> I'm just lucky Granny and Applejack let me help. It's fun watching the pros work. Twilight shook her head. I wish Granny would relax for a bit. I feel so bad making her work all day. Twilight, you know darn well Princess Celestia herself couldn't keep Granny out of the kitchen when there's folks to cook for. Well, she's gonna let me do the dishes. I'm putting my hoof down. Twilight smirked and stomped her hoof for emphasis. Applejack gave Twilight a quick kiss on the cheek. You're awful cute when you're stubborn. Most of the time, at least. Applejack said with a wink that made Twilight giggle. Twilight smiled, then lit the candles in the center of the table. There. She leaned against Applejack and admired the table setting. Then her eyes drifted over the rest of her home. Ponies laughing, a warm fire, beautiful decorations, a delicious meal. And they got to offer this to the ponies they loved. It was a dream come true. And like most dreams come true, it took more sweat and tears and heartbreak and frustration than she wanted to think about right at that moment. But her home was worth every second of it.